Asia has been the home to many great monarchies, and it was an influential part of the ancient world. The impact that Asian countries had on the ancient world can be clearly seen in the trade network known as the Silk Road, which was established in 130 BCE. It was an essential and lucrative trade route for the kingdoms of Asia, with goods passing along the network from all over the known world, demonstrating the power and economy of the region. Keep watching as we take a look at some of the most influential monarchies in ancient Asia. Number 1. The Han Dynasty of China The Han Dynasty was founded in 206 BCE by Liu Bang. Liu Bang started life as a peasant and worked as a police officer during the Qin Dynasty. After the death of Emperor Shi Huang, Liu Bang became an important rebel leader. Once the rebellion had been successful, infighting broke out amongst the rebel leaders and Liu Bang came out victorious over his militarily superior rival due to his political shrewdness. After his death, his ambitious and driven wife became the first woman to take the title Empress of China. In contrast to their predecessors, the Qin Dynasty encouraged scholarly pursuits and extensive record-keeping. The Han adopted a Confucian ideology to mask their ultimately authoritarian regime. They promoted moderation, virtue, and familial devotion. One of the most powerful and successful leaders of the Han Dynasty was Emperor Wu Di, who ruled from 141 to 87 BCE. Under Wu Di, the Han Empire expanded in all directions. His wars vastly increased the authority of the Han Dynasty, but also exhausted the state's reserves, reflecting his posthumous title of Wu Di, meaning Martial Emperor. As well as extensive military conflicts, Wu Di is also remembered for making Confucianism the state religion of China. The Han Dynasty was highly influential, developing civil services and government structure. It also was responsible for many scientific advancements, such as the use of water clocks and seismographs to record the motion of the ground during earthquakes. They invented paper and compiled extensive libraries that included works on mathematics, medicine, philosophy, religion, and art. Perhaps the most notable influence was on the Chinese people themselves, and 400 years after the fall of the Han Dynasty, all cultural Chinese were referred to as Han people. Number 2. The Xiongnu Empire of Central Asia The Xiongnu, also known as the Xiongnu, were a pastoral people who dominated the eastern Eurasian steppe from around 200 BCE to 100 CE. This empire was multi-ethnic and constantly threatened China's northern border to such an extent that China began to erect what would later become the Great Wall of China. One of the most influential leaders of the Xiongnu was Modu Chanyu. Long before Genghis Khan united the Mongol tribes, Modu Chanyu headed a powerful monarchy made up of a coalition of tribes in Central Asia. Modu came to power in 209 BCE after he ordered his men to kill his father, who was the founder of the Xiongnu Empire. By 203 BCE, Mo Du had subdued all of the Xiongnu lords, uniting the empire under his rule. Mo Du had a reputation for bravery and built up a band of loyal warriors. He regularly tested his men's loyalty, ordering the men to kill his favorite horse or wife, and anyone who hesitated to do so was executed. In this way, he could be sure that his men would carry out his commands without question or pause. This unquestioning loyalty came in handy when he shot his father on a hunting trip, as none of the men he was with faltered, making him the undisputed head of the Xiongnu. The Xiongnu were mounted warriors who had forces of up to 300,000 archers on horseback at their command. They protected and expanded their territory with fierce aggression, and the maneuverability of their army outmatched the Chinese military, which primarily used chariots. Even the completion of the Great Wall did not stop the Xiongnu entirely. The rulers of the Han Dynasty attempted to control the Xiongnu with family ties rather than war and arranged marriages between Han princesses and Xiongnu leaders. In 51 BCE, the Xiongnu split in two, with the Eastern Horde submitting to the Chinese and the Western Horde forced into Central Asia. The Xiongnu had a profound influence on the political economy of much of Asia. They established extensive trade networks that dealt in goods such as Chinese bronzeware, lacquerware and silks, Greek silver, Persian textiles, Egyptian glazed earthenware, and Roman glass. It foreshadowed the rise of the Mongol Empire and led to Chinese military expansion into Central Asia. 
Number 3. The Haryanka Dynasty of India The Haryanka Dynasty lasted from 544 BCE until 412 BCE and was founded by Bimbisar, who was one of the earliest kings of the Indian kingdom of Magadha. Bimbisara amassed a large army and began an aggressive expansion of his neighboring states. In an attempt to avoid violence, the surrounding kingdoms offered to ally with Bimbisara through marriage, and he married the princesses of Kosala, Vaishali, and Madra states. Bimbisara's son, Ajit Shatru, inherited his father's ruthlessness and performed patricide in order to get the throne. Once again, the state of Kosala was forced to offer up a princess to avoid outright invasion. After that, Ashit Shatru spent nearly 16 years conquering Vaishali, expanding Magadha into more territories and bringing it to the peak of its power. But Ajit Shatru's reign was not only concerned with wars and expansion, he also helped create the first Buddhist gathering at Rajagriha. The kingdom of Magadha was famed for its prosperous geographical advantages, such as ample rainfall and fertile land. The Haryanka dynasty was one of Magadha's most prosperous monarchies, and they adopted an innovative approach that continued to be adopted by India's rulers after the dynasty fell. Despite the violence and aggression of the Haryanka dynasty, their rule was generally one of peace, and they are mainly remembered for their spiritual heritage. Bimbisara's expansion of his kingdom is said to have laid the foundations for the later Mauryan Empire. The Haryanka monarchy also had great cultural influence, as Bimbisara was the friend and protector of the Buddha. King Bimbisara is mentioned in Buddhist scriptures and was said to have met the Buddha before his enlightenment, later becoming an important disciple. He fostered a culture of religious tolerance, which enabled any religion within his kingdom to flourish, and he was a keen supporter of arts and crafts. He established stable trade and administration within Magadha. Number 4. The Achaemenid Dynasty this dynasty of Persian kings ruled from 559 BCE to 330 BCE. These kings were the rulers of the Achaemenid Empire. This monarchy eventually presided over an area that stretched from Egypt to the Balkans, creating an empire that was the largest the ancient world had seen. Cyrus the Great was probably the most influential ruler of the Achaemenid dynasty and founded the Achaemenid Empire. His life is mixed with legend as he features in the Greek text Cyropedia and the Bible as the liberator of the Jews who were captives in Babylon. Cyrus was able to consolidate the power of the Achaemenid dynasty and extend its influence over the Iranian tribes. He also defeated the king of Lydia, expanding the Persian territories to the Ionian Greek cities on the Aegean coast. Cyrus was tolerant towards his conquered people and supported their local customs, sacrificing to local deities to ingratiate himself. Cyrus was regarded as a great leader and conqueror, but it was his skill at administration that really solidified his rule. His effective leadership allowed the Achaemenid Empire to continue to expand after his death. He became the epitome of what it meant to be a great ruler, had a massive influence on Greek culture, and was admired by Greek and Macedonian leaders, including Alexander the Great. The Achaemenid Empire was the first to establish regular communication between the three continents of Africa, Asia, and Europe. They built new roads and developed a postal service that transported goods and communications via mail. They had highly advanced metalworking processes, particularly in gold. They also established a centralized bureaucratic administration, developed civil services, and promoted the use of an official language across its territories. Number 5. Amorite Dynasty the Amorite dynasty began to merge in Mesopotamia around 2000 BCE. It is thought that they originated in Syria. However, their origins have never been verified, and very little is known about them until they began to gain power. They had a profound influence on Mesopotamian history, and their impact was felt long after the dynasty had fallen. The Amorites came to power after the fall of the Sumerians, whose society was based on monarchical ownership of the farms, land, and people. In contrast, the Amorites allowed their subjects to farm their own lands and have more control over their own business. They influenced the development of civilization by laying a foundation for concepts such as literature and mathematics and establishing better trade practices by developing multiplication. The Sumerian civilization ended when the Elamites sacked Ur in 1750 BCE, but this invasion was only possible as earlier Amorite incursions had weakened Ur. 
The Amorites also built up a significant military force, making them one of the major powers in Babylonia. One of the foremost sought-after areas in the region was the Euphrates River. As this region was dependent on irrigation agriculture, the Amorites spent a considerable amount of political and military power trying to control the Euphrates. According to the Bible, the Amorites were the pre-Israelite inhabitants of Canaan. The Hebrew scribes who wrote the Bible went to great lengths to distinguish themselves from the Amorites despite the Amorites being, according to modern scholars, the ancestors of the Israeli patriarchs. This distancing is possibly due to the Amorites' weakening of the power of priests in society, preferring to rule via government rather than divine power. Almost all of the Babylonian kings were a part of the Amorite dynasty, including the famous Hammurabi. Hammurabi spent a significant amount of time on infrastructure, constructing canals and restoring and maintaining city walls, temples, and public buildings. He expanded the old city and brought vast regions of Mesopotamia under Babylon's rule. Hammurabi clearly had military skills, but was also a diplomatic and politically adept ruler. One of the most influential and lasting facets of his reign was the Code of Hammurabi, which is the most complete collection of Babylonian laws that still exist today. Transforming the small city-state of Babylon into a large territory took a lot of consolidating, and Hammurabi made changes that affected nearly all spheres of life. He clearly took a lot of interest in how he governed his people, and his code reflects how he wanted to be seen, as a just and fair ruler. Hammurabi and the Amorite monarchy had a decided impact on ancient Mesopotamian culture, which many believe to be the basis for our civilization as we know it. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the history of Asia, check out our book, History of Southeast Asia, a captivating guide to the history of a vast region containing countries such as Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Burma, and more. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.